Well, it's been a while since we've gotten to some direct-to-video found footage movies on this site. This one is called The Whispering Man. Kind of like The Bye Bye Man, but with a very strict library whispering policy. Again, as I said, this is a found footage movie about a man whose grandmother has passed away, and in her attic, she kept this weird alien painting up there that may or may not be haunted, but luckily, our hero Mark has a YouTube series called Chasing Fear, in which he is going to kill a lot of time to see whether or not the alien painting will come to life or start haunting things or do some crazy paranormal activity-ish type things around the house. This is direct video though, so maybe more so a paranormal entity. Now, if you're expecting that smooth dressed, smooth suave talking alien from the box cover of this movie, you know, the one that looks like an alien from Roswell decided to have a clothes changing montage and open up a plastic surgeon's office in Miami, well, you're going to be very, very disappointed because all we really get here in terms of that is just the painting of the alien head that kind of looks like a Unsolved Mysteries-esque artist's conception of what someone may have seen in the dark at around two in the morning in the middle of the woods? <laughs> yeah, long story short, wake me when he has a tailor. So a lot of this is presented like a vlog, and the first handful of minutes when I was watching this, when it was just our main character, Mark, looking at the camera, just simply describing things about his grandparents and also the painting, it felt less like I was watching the movie and that I was just skipping the movie and watching my review of the movie. But he assures me that things will get very exciting. In the opening scene, he says, brace yourself, there's going to be some crazy stuff happening. Cue the next scene, he's just kind of wandering around his living room and uh, showing us his furniture and the cabinets and the picture of his grandmother that he keeps unframed just in the uh, nice china cabinet. And then I guess that episode of Chasing Fear ends, because when it pops up the Chasing Fear title card that it does a few times in the movie, Mark comes back and says, well, I know we got off to a slow start in that first episode. I go, that was your whole first episode? Who's going to keep watching this series after this? Eventually, some stuff happens. I mean, I check my phone a few times through the movie. It's got the usual scenes where our characters are asleep, and there might be some kind of noise in the background. Cut to the next morning when Mark says, Hey, uh, did you experience anything weird last night? And his brother goes, Nope. Well, that's the end of that chasing fear, I guess. Don't worry, it does way scarier things, like it'll shut out the lights every now and then when they're talking. It'll also randomly turn on the radio to play some ultra-spooky ukulele music. <laughs> Whoa, what? This is the most ukulele soundtrack that I've seen in a found footage horror movie. Now, ghosts do show up at one point. They're reviewing a tape that was shot in this abandoned hospital, I believe, where all these spooky ghost doctors pop up. Cue to Mark watching the tape, and he's like, whoa, that's crazy. Let's continue watching this. I like how when the ghost doctors pop up, the chasing fear card comes into it again when at the beginning of the movie it says that what we're watching was edited together with all of this footage that was found by the police and the police were nice enough to edit all this footage together and make this whispering man movie that we can all watch comfortably from home so it was very nice of the police when editing this to put in the chasing fear title cards every, every now and then I don't know yet. I don't have a lot of clips of this. The trailer for it's only like 50 seconds long, and the movie itself is just 70 minutes, 73 minutes if you count the ending credits. There was one funny part in the movie when it's near the beginning, when a character drops a reference to the room just 
out of nowhere. And the character's reaction was so genuine that it it felt improv and this was a real reaction that we were seeing. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. That's my brother, Tommy. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> Tommy is four years older than me, but it was never a problem. So, okay, I guess the highlight was the room reference, but you know that saying, don't reference a better movie in the middle of your bad one? That applies here, but it's really bad when the better movie in question is the room. Okay, again, you see no nice, well-suited alien running around. Instead, uh, the guy gets more possessed as the movie goes along, chases a few people around with a very bloodless hatchet. So, yeah, I give this movie a very, very, very low Aurora encounter. All right, follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob. Subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash stonegremlinproductions. Click the notification bell as well, and check out our other recent reviews for Scoob and The Wrong Missy. See you next time.